July 31st, 2019 Homedale Board of Education meeting. Statement is hereby made that the adequate notice of this meeting was given by posting written notice prominently on the bulletin board in the office of the Board of Education, the district's website, and sent to the four district schools. The mailing and or hand delivery of said notice to designated newspapers as by Park Press, Independent, the PLG, PSG, PSA, PTSO, SAB presence, and student representatives to the board, and filing with the clerk of Homedale Township Police Headquarters and Public Library. Meetings of the board are open to the public and all members of the community should feel free to participate. There will be two opportunities for the public to speak. The first is at the beginning of the meeting for agenda items only, and the second is at the end of the meeting for other items. Any individual desiring to speak shall give his or her name, address, and the group of any that is represented. The presentation shall be as brief as possible, but no more than three minutes per individual. There are certain matters that may be brought before the board that cannot be immediately addressed in public. Such matters may be referred by the president to a board committee and or the superintendent for consideration and or resolution. The board vests in its president or other presiding officer authority to terminate the remarks of any individual if she deems it in the best interest of those present to do so. May I have a roll call, please? Ms. Flynn. Here. Mrs. Bremonte. Here. Mr. Sago. Here. Mrs. Lou. Mr. Reddy. Here. Mrs. Amarada. Here. Mrs. Collins. Here. Mr. Wool. Here. Mr. Foster. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Can you please rise for the flat seat? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, tonight is a very exciting night. We're doing a presentation on the Home Bill 2020 to provide a status update. Um, I'm assuming this will be available on the website for people who aren't here tonight and are listening. Or, um, so without further ado, I, I guess we're introducing our construction manager. Rob Diamond's coming up. Ken Shropsland, who's our director of plants and operations, right? And anyone else? We're good? Oh, Steve Siegel. I didn't see Steve. Oh, there he is. Hi, Steve. Steve Siegel's up. And, and, and Dan. I'm not saying this. Oh, and Dennis from Greyhawk is here, too. So just so everyone knows, um, this is our um, team who are managing our construction project. And every month, and some of you who listen to our meetings, they come to every one of our budget and finance meetings without fail, as well as our buildings and grounds. Um, our committee was structured purposely to have four board, different board members on each of those committees, and they provide updates to us at every single uh, meeting um, and provide answers to questions we have. They provide detailed reports. So for that, I thank you, because I know it's a huge imposition of your time. And without further ado, please. Continue with your questions. Great, thank you very much. Can everybody hear me or would you like me to use the microphone? You have to use the microphone. I stand here and block and listen. So, can everybody hear me now? Thank you. Uh, as, as mentioned before, my name is Robert Dine and I'm with Greyhawk. We're one of the cons I'm part of the construction management team uh, for your 2020 Home Dell Initiative. I'm joined. Uh, with Ken Stromsland, who is your uh, facilities manager, Dennis Kipsakis, uh, who is part of my Greyhawk team, Stephen Siegel from Spiesel Architects, and Dan Chitoni from Spiesel Architects. So the way this is going to go, uh, very informal, uh, we are going to present first uh, the work that's currently in progress uh, at both uh, your elementary schools, Village and Indian Hill, and then we're going to talk about the work that's going on at the uh, SATS Middle School and High School Complex. And then we're going to wrap it up with the last part of the 2018 work uh, that it was just recently completed um, this spring, actually early summer. Um, so if there aren't any questions, we are just going to uh, click through the slides here and uh, describe to you what's going on. So what you see here is uh, Indian Hill Elementary School, uh, and we call it demo. That is a uh, cut word for demolition. Uh, so if any of you were there, uh, 
you would have had a what we call a soffit, which is that wooden structure above and below where would have been cabinets. When you come back uh, at the school year, you're going to see uh, a new soffit and new cabinets in 19 of those classrooms. Uh, this is some of the work that's in progress. As you can see, we uh, start demo first, and then we continue renovations. And then since I don't have anything to show you to complete, because it's still in progress, this is what we call a, an elevation view. And this shows how you're going to have a sink, you're going to have casework, cabinets, and cubbies uh, along that wall. And then this is one of the corridors uh, that are outside of the classrooms. We decided to put uh, new ceiling and new lighting in there. The lighting are going to be LED lights, so they're very efficient, they're very bright. Uh, they make the uh, corridor a very nice, usable space. And this is the area of the school uh, where you're going to see the uh, new lights. Uh, again, that's called a plan view or an overhead view. And uh, the gray area that you see are the ceiling tiles, and the darker areas, the darker gray, uh, are going to be where the light fixtures are. And then this is an overhead shot of Indian Hill, and it's showing the work that is currently ongoing with your uh, new parking lot and bus loop. Uh, this will allow the buses uh, to have improved circulation, uh, keep them off the streets, also improve uh, parent drop-off, et cetera, uh, and pick up. Uh, you'll see how the buses will be able to come in and they'll be able to circulate around the circle and then continue down and come to the front of the school. <coughs> and this is, again, another overhead shot of what, uh, here in a very few short weeks, everything is going to look like. You see your additional parking, you see how your bus loop is created, you can see how you're coming off uh, the main road there. And then we're moving over to uh, the village. Uh, this is going to be uh, your renovated uh, school STEM lab, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, for those who, I'm sure everybody in this room knows what STEM is by now. Uh, again, these are freshly painted walls, a new soffit. And again, this is what it's going to uh, look like when it's done. Um, the four areas in the center, those represent, uh, you know, educational spaces instead of desk and chairs it's more tables uh, the whole room is meant to be very interactive so it can be changed around uh, configured to you know make the learning environment the way it's supposed to be in a STEM lab which is very relevant and um, dynamic and functional again this is uh, one of your uh, SGI one of your uh, special education rooms uh, again freshly painted walls uh, we did some minor reconfiguration in the space, you can't see it, but there will also be a new mechanical system in there delivering uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. And this is what that classroom is going to look like, another overhead view for the small group instruction it's providing. And this is uh, your art room, again, uh, freshly painted walls. And again, this is how uh, your room is going to look, it's going to be configured, You'll, uh, we actually have a storage area in there to uh, house all the supplies and then along the one side of the wall will be areas where uh, all the different projects that are done uh, throughout the year, uh, they'll be able to be, uh, as they're in progress and they need drying time, etc. there's racks set up for that. It's a very functional area, very well laid out and um, you know, you, everyone will be able to uh, display um, all their hard work and efforts. And then this is your old gym floor. Uh, you can see how we're uh, in the process of removing that. Uh, and then after you remove it, we have to prep what's called the substrate below uh, to make sure that it's ready for to accept the new floor. And this is uh, the installation of the floor. And there's its uh, multi-layered floor system, so that's one of the beginning steps that you see there. Uh, this is the actual floor as it's being stored in the area. And then you can see how it's starting to uh, progress uh, as the installation continues. And when it's all done, it's going to look very similar to that. And you can see your game lines in there, it'll be a very nice area 
uh, for the students. And of course, many of you may be familiar with the old gravel lot. Uh, it's not an old gravel lot anymore. Uh, it'll be a newly paved lot. We've started that work. Uh, it'll have new drainage. Uh, of course, new sidewalks going to and from the parking lot uh, to the building. And at the end of the day, this is what it's going to look like. You'll see how you have increased parking spaces, better flow in and out, improved drainage. And on a rainy day like we had a few hours ago, your shoes and pants won't be covered with mud as you go from the gravel lot uh, to the elementary school. Now we're moving over to the uh, high school, Sachs Middle School complex. Um, this is going to be the area where your new multi-purpose and team room is going to be. Uh, this was the teacher's lot before. This is the teacher's parking lot now. Uh, again, more uh, construction. Uh, this is what we call a building pad. Um, as we start to develop this, there's different elevations. Uh, so we need to bring uh, the elevations of the existing grades up to a certain uh, elevation, so that way we can make it look like this. Uh, you can see how there will be uh, a ramp and stairs leading into it, and uh, this will be your new structure. This was your high school wrestling room. This is what your high school wrestling room looks like now, uh, and it's going to become the new engineering wing. This is your old middle school uh, boys locker room. Uh, it has been completely uh, demolished uh, down to the core and shell and we're redoing everything in there. Uh, as you can see, we have to do a lot of trenching to add new piping to reconfigure the spaces. Uh, this is the new pipe that goes in there. And then this is where your new link is gonna be, which is uh, going to allow this complex to become very functional with respect to 360 circulation throughout the building. Uh, so this area is being torn up, so that way uh, at the end it'll look like this. We'll have a nice gymnasium entrance, and that'll be the entrance also to the lake. As you can see, if you look left to right, you can see how it's going to go from the existing gym, move to your right, that is all new construction, all new landscaping. Uh, that's what it'll look like uh, in a very short time. Uh, this is how we're preparing your front entrance uh, for your new high school entrance, your new office area, your new nurse's suite, and that actually connects into the link which we just spoke about. And it is going to look like this. And in the evening, it's going to look like this. So it's going to be backlit. Uh, again, it's going to be a very nice uh, showpiece uh, for Homedown Board of Education. And with that said, that actually completes our 2019 work that's in progress. Um, everything is uh, going on the right path. Uh, so we're very excited about it. And what I'd like to do now, if you noticed, all the other slides said progress. Uh, these slides say complete, and that is because we are complete. So we started this work in August of 2018, and we were able to uh, work diligently up until almost uh, the holiday season. Um, so Mother Nature was fairly favorable to us, and then it turned on us quickly, and it got extremely rainy, it got extremely cold, and we had to pack up and we had to wait until probably April uh, to re- uh, start the work again. Um, and then we were able to finish it uh, a few weeks ago. And so I wanted to give you uh, an overhead of, you can see how all your new fields are there. And then take a look at each field individually. Here's your new baseball field. This is your new softball field. These are your renovated basketball courts. And of course, renovated tennis courts. Brand new, excuse me. And with that said, that uh, 
ends my presentation for this evening, and hopefully that has given you a good sense of where the Home Dell 2020 initiative uh, has been and is going. Uh, meaning sod 
And what we did is we did what was called top dressing and overseeding of the outfields. And, and the reason that was done uh, is because uh, when you're putting together a large $40 million referendum, uh, you, you go from you know, what's called schematic design all the way to definitive design. And as you're working through these um, process, there's various um, scenarios and courses of action that you have to look at and you have to uh, price. And then, unfortunately, uh, sometimes you can't put brand new sod on everything that you would like to, or you can't go synthetic turf on everything that you may like to. So the decision was made, just exactly what you said, with the infields and the outfields. But what I can tell you with the outfields, I personally have not uh, seen what you described. I don't doubt you. Uh, but we did do top dress, we did do overseeding, and there is also irrigation out there. So just as recently as yesterday, the engineer who designed that was out and walked the fields, and we're actually waiting to get information back from them on the status of the fields, because one thing that we have not done is, while it says complete, um, the contractor is not complete with respect to um, his payments, his retainage, nor his punch list. So we still have the opportunity to have the contractor come back, address certain issues with which the engineer may or may not have picked up yesterday, but obviously this will be one of our concerns which we will bring forth to them, and not only the engineer, but also the contractor, and we'll, we'll see what they have to say about that matter, and what they intend to remedy it. When, when was the seating and the top dressing done? When was that done? It was done last season. Okay, I, I, I mean, I don't know who's, who's doing that, but I got a cheap lawn service. Um, you know, and, and my lawn looks way, way better than that outfield. Um, it's it's not in good shape. Um, and and I, I guess the other question I, I still have is, is that as a member of the community, I was told that we would have a, an entire field addressed that would be in great shape and everything. Um, and we were told that too, Mr. Crowley, and your complaint that you're, you're talking about, I did look at those fields and I did bring that to administration who I know they brought it know they brought it to the attention of the people that are supposed to go out there and address it. So the issues you're addressing, I, you know it in a greater detail than I do. I just knew it from okay. the natural eye of a, of a lawyer, which is not a landscaper. But in terms of understanding, we need to look at those fields. They have to look better. And that message has been delivered I, as far as I understand it. Yeah, Joe, I think the key here is this is over here. How you doing? I think that if I please correct me, but this is an organic situation. I mean, we have the ability to fix this field if the grass has not come out the way it should be and that it's been overrun by crabgrass. And I think that uh, everyone here on the board wants to make sure that our kids have facilities that look good and are functional for the play of baseball and other sporting events. So, I th you know, we're going to look and see what we can do to correct the problem. Um, and I think we appreciate the fact that that you've taken the time to express this, and we're going to take it back and see what we can do to, to make those fields look better. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I don't. I, I guess the key I wanted to point out is this is not an end game. I mean, because okay. these are because these are natural turf fields, and because we took the time and effort to make sure that we created a maintenance program for these fields with irrigation and, and a maintenance strategy. This is not an end game. It's not like we delivered it and then we're going to move on. We'll. You know, we expect that certain things will come out exactly the way they should, and we'll take steps we can to make sure that they're right. Okay, well, um, my son was a senior, uh, graduated senior, is now headed off to college. Uh, so I only have a stake in this as a, as a member of the community who believes that sports is an important part of our, our, our youth's education. Um, my son I was on the 2014 baseball team, so I'm totally, totally cognizant of your Well, well I, I will say also that we didn't play any home games the entire season because these fields are going to be ready for next year. So I'm hoping this isn't, we'll look at it and see what happens. I'm hoping what this is, is the fields will be ready for next year. Because the, the kids deserve that. And, and the community, as we've been told and promised this stuff, we deserve it as well. And 
Mr. Crowley, we are at the, end the at the end of the month in August. We are having a walkthrough as a board of okay. all these facilities and the fields. I hope and I anticipate will look appropriately as promised to all of us Very when good. we go there. And if not, we'll figure out a plan of action. Thank you. Thank you. And I know, Joe, when we talked about this start of referendum like three years ago when the discussion happened, when it was apparent that we weren't going to be able to get turf fields as much as, you know, I'm a huge, yeah, I'm not talking one about of the big turf, turf just but, no, but, grass no, no, but the point be better. Was, when we weren't able to get that, I know the big conversation with some previous board members had as well was, okay, then we have to absolutely make sure we have 100% Maintenance plan ongoing, you know, not just our, you know, not just the facility directors, people cutting the grass, just like as part of their daily chores, but actually a, a maintenance program from a trained, you know, contractor that does this every day. So to me, you know, obviously baseball starts off what back February, March next year. Obviously, yes. way before that, the work we do now is going to be very important come next year, because otherwise, come March, you're going to be in big trouble. You won't be able to catch up. So, like uh, Vicky said, I know this definitely isn't a you know, end game, this is going to continue. Okay. I was out there a few weeks ago, so maybe there's a change in the last few weeks, but I, I hadn't anticipated with the hot weather, but thank you for your time. Thank you so for coming. I, just, I appreciate it. If I could just add to that, um, the fields were just recently turned over to us from the contractor. So we've begun, um, as an example, the irrigation system. We found that it needed to be reprogrammed. We found that it um, was not getting enough water. So we've gone through the whole system. Uh, reprogramming the watering, and now if you look at the fields, you would see a tremendous difference from just a few weeks ago. Okay. And also, there is a whole maintenance program. We will be trying not to use uh, certain chemicals and things, more of a natural process. And again, mutant cuttings, as long as they're done properly, add the nutrients that are necessary for it in a more natural way. Uh, again, we're trying not to use anything, any herbicides and things that we can avoid that. So uh, already there are areas that we're seeing develop and get better. We're actually looking at perhaps even extending some of that irrigation to some areas that were not included in the original area. So uh, again, we've simply been taking this over. And again, the contractor is still, still has responsibility. There's still a warranty for the year. And uh, we're gonna be following up. And I think uh, if you go out there again now, you'll see some improvements already, but uh, we see it as necessary to do much more Okay, thank you. And uh, just, to, I think I heard that the outfield was irrigated as well. Someone said that? Yes, it is. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Anyone else on the Home Bill 2020? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, and like I said earlier, the board is going to be at our August meeting. We're going to go on a tour of all the buildings. So we're going to re notice that meeting. Um, we're going to open up the meeting and then head out on our tour. Okay. Um, thank you, guys. It's Dr. McGarry's turn. It's the superintendent report.